There's also been a lot of concern about misinformation and the essays or, or pamphlets that come with this campaign. These were published online this week and will be mailed out to voters later this year. Lorena, what did we learn from these pamphlets about the thinking of the yes and no camps at this stage of the referendum? One thing I need to point out is that these pamphlets are not fact-checked. They are the opinions of both the yes and the no MPs involved in writing them. And I think as the days roll on, we'll have there'll be plenty of argument about the content of those pamphlets. So when you read them, and I encourage you to read them, read them in the understanding that they are not factual, they are not fact-checked by an independent authority. Okay, so in the Yes campaign, the Yes essay was written by Labor MPs and approved by politicians who've backed the referendum. And they say the three main things it offers are recognition, listening and better results. They're saying, you know, uh, it may, stands to reason that because uh, the government has the power to make laws for Aboriginal people, we should consult Aboriginal people when we make those laws. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, ni- a, a nice distilled, clear message. The no side... Um, have said the things that they have said in the past. It's divisive along racial lines, which is something that's been rebutted frequently by by the other side, um, that it's legally risky, again, it's been rebutted, and that it's divisive and we don't have enough detail. So those are the things that they've been saying for months and months and months. Mm. And a lot of people have been at pains to point out may not be entirely correct. Nevertheless, we have the pamphlets now and, and the cynic in me says well, there's a new front on which people can argue, really, with, with the, their publication this week. You are right in that it's not fact-checked and reading through there are some things that are clearly factual errors. Well, what we know is that the constitutional lawyer, Greg Craven, who has been a critic of The Voice in the past but has now said he will support it wholeheartedly, was furious on Tuesday at his him being quoted in the No pamphlet um, as saying that the voice was was risky, he said that he uh, explicitly asked the opposition leader's office not to use him in the pamphlet, and he feels that he was ignored, and that he's considering making a complaint. So, as I said, there's there's argument about the 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 truthfulness or the veracity of what's being published by the AEC. But I also have to say it's not the AEC who's the arbiter of this information. They are required by law to make to publish these things, but they don't fact check and it's not their responsibility to correct errors either. Kerry, what did you make of the arguments published in these pamphlets? I, I haven't heard any, um, and, and it's early days, yes, but I haven't, I haven't heard the no campaign able to point any, point to any errors or misstatements uh, from the yes campaign. Let me just give you one illustration of how the no campaign uh, runs its pamphlet. They, they do, I think it's 10 Ten reasons, they say, as to why we should vote no. One of them is, the voice, it won't help Indigenous Australians. Now, how can they possibly say that? It won't. Not it might not. It won't help Indigenous Australians. They are in no position to say that. I think you can argue a carefully thought through, justifiable case as to why the voice is very likely to help by closing the gap on a number of areas simply because the policy makers will have greater access uh, to, to the word, if you like, the, the wisdom of, of uh, grassroots Indigenous communities uh, when they are putting their policies together, which will enhance the quality and the relevance and the deliverability of the policies and therefore close the gaps. But to actually say, as the No campaign do, it won't help Indigenous Australians, they just cannot possibly sustain that. They just can't. Do you believe the wording in the No campaign pamphlet was more inflammatory than you expected, Kerry? Uh, no, not than I expected. This, th- th- there is a series, there is a web of fabrication uh, that is reflected in the No campaign. It's just there. And it's easily, it is easily demonstrated. It hasn't been demonstrated, I believe, enough by mainstream journalism. Uh, but it is reflected in, in this pamphlet, and it doesn't surprise me, no. And we could go through each of these different headlines. They say it, it would be divisive. Well, the, the most divisive aspect of this campaign so far has been the way the No campaign, campaign has conducted itself. Uh, when they talk about about um, it would be it would be creating two Australias. It would somehow 
elevate Indigenous Australians to a position of greater privilege. The Solicitor General of Australia, along with a raft of High Court judges, senior preeminent uh, constitutional academics and so on, all of whom are saying essentially the same thing, that this voice does not represent risk to the Constitution, uh, to the court system, to the system of executive government. Second headline in the No campaign, it's risky. Fourth one, it's divisive. Uh, the Solicitor General, for instance, who is non-political, uh, he was actually appointed by a Conservative government. He's still there advising the Labor government. He says that this voice, enshrined in the Constitution, will actually enhance our democracy. I mean, these pamphlets will come with the weight of being sent out from the Electoral Commission. Is there a concern that people won't hear this message, that they haven't been fact-checked and will take this as gospel, that this will spread information, misinformation? Yes, they will read this stuff and they will think that it's legitimate because it's written in black and white. But I also think they've already done that job on social media. Like the, the social media campaign of, from No is, uh, is going off on, on Twitter and Facebook and it's being shared and all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories are, are growing from that stuff. So I think that the pamphlet is just one aspect of a wider campaign that's already taken off in the community.